if babies could talk. No, I'm not talking about baby geniuses. I'm talking about Rugrats, one of the best cartoons to ever come out of Nickelodeon. My name is Maggie for Channel Frederator, and this week we're counting down the 107 facts that you need to know about Rugrats. Number one. Here's something to make 90s kids feel old. Rugrats premiered on August 11th, 1991, and it ended on June 4th, 2004, which is more than 10 years ago. That would make the Rugrats the same age today. Can you believe they never aged? Lucky babies. Number two. With a 13 year run, Rugrats was the longest running Nicktoon on Nickelodeon until 2015 when SpongeBob broke its record. Number three. All four of the main babies are voiced by females, despite three of them being male. Just wait till they find out. Number four. Lil and Phil almost always refer to each other by their full names, Lillian and Philip. Number five. With the 1998 release of the Rugrats movie, Rugrats was the first Nicktoon to get a film. Angelica's rendition of One Way or Another will forever live on in my memory. Number six. Along with Doug and the Ren and Stimpy show, Rugrats is one of the original quote unquote Nicktoons. Number seven. Chucky's appearance is based on that of Mark Mothersbaugh. Who whip it real good. Number eight. For those of you who are wondering who that is, Mark Mothersbaugh, who was the composer for Rugrats, and a whole bunch of other amazing things ranging from Wes Anderson films to Clifford the Big Red Dog to the Jack and Daxter video game series. Number 9. Fans with keen deductive skills may have figured out where the show takes place. The flag at the post office and the license plate on the car reveal that the setting is good old California. Number 10. Dee Dee is based on Arlene Klasky, one of the creators of Rugrats. And Stu is based on Gabor Chupo, Klasky's husband and the other creator of the show. Number 11. At age 3 years old, Angelica is the oldest of the Rugrats. She's followed closely by Susie and then by Chucky, who's 2, Kimmy, who's almost 2, and Lil, who's barely older than Phil. And lastly, Tommy and Dill, who will wear diapers for all eternity. Number 12. The Rugrats movie and the episode Mother's Day reveal that Chucky's mom is deceased and has been since shortly after he was born. However, early episodes imply that she was alive. Hmm, I smell a cover-up. She probably got sick of the Rugrats and went to go live on a desert island with Elvis and Tupac. Number 13. The Rugrats pilot episode was titled Tommy Pickles and the Great White Thing. It never aired on television, but featured Tommy trying to figure out what that great white thing inside the bathroom was. Hint, it's what you use after drinking a lot of water. Or prune juice. Or where your fish go to die. <gasps> Number 14. In the aforementioned pilot, Lou Pickles was actually named Stu Pickles Sr. Number 15. Of the three original Nicktoons, Rugrats was the only one in which Billy West was not a voice actor. Number 16. Pat Sajak is the only celebrity to guest star as the real life self in all three original Nicktoons. I feel like Vanna White never got her due, you guys. Number 17. Tommy is based on the son of Gabor Chupo and Arlene Klasky. Brendan, try saying those names five times fast. Number 18. When Dr. Lipschitz visits the pickles, he hums to himself throughout the entire segment. The tune he's humming, the German national anthem, of course. Number 19. At the start of Rugrats, Stu is 35 and Lou is 76. That makes Lou 41 years old when Stu was born. Number 20. The Pickles live at 1258 North Highland, which is the original address of the Klasky Chupo, the production company behind Rugrats. Number 21. Angelica's cat Fluffy is a white Persian and 100% evil. Number 22. Angelica's character design is inspired by a girl named Emika, who was a niece of one of the show's writers. Number 23. Aunt Miriam mistakenly calls Dee Dee a variety of names that include Dolly, Sally, Callie, Ginny, Phoebe, and Fifi. Number 24. Grandpa Lou loves number 15. The show makes a joke out of this when robot grandpa says that his batteries function fine for 15 million years. Number 25. The Rugrats had a total of 172 episodes, 227 if you include all grown up. That's over 100 hours of my life that I could have been doing nothing better. Number 26. Rugrats co-creator Arlene Klasky said that she never liked Angelica, calling the character a bully. After the Rugrats movie, she had a change of heart. Now she loves Angelica. I think she's the only one. Number 27. Angelica was created by Rugrats co-creator Paul Germain, who based her on a bully from his own childhood. Number 28. Cheryl Chase had difficulties portraying Angelica's mean nature. To help her grasp the character, Steve Vixton, a writer on the show, told her that Angelica was the J.R. Ewing of Rugrats. J.R. Ewing is a character from the hit television series Dallas. 
Number 29, Chucky's appearance is similar to that of Chucky, the antagonist of the Child's Play films. Coincidence? Well, enjoy watching the Rugrats from now on in utter fear. Number 30, Tommy was voiced by Tammy Holbrook in the Rugrats pilot episode. In the series, however, he's voiced by E.G. Daly. Number 31, Tommy was born premature. Number 32, Tommy was walking at five to six months, which is quite early. The average age for a baby to begin walking is around 10 months. Man, those child actors, they sure do develop fast. Number 33, Tommy may be ambidextrous as he's shown using either hand to complete tasks on numerous occasions. Number 34, Dill and Chucky are both left-handed. Number 35, there are slight differences in Tommy's hair color between season one and season two of All Grown Up. In season one, his hair is a dark purple, but in season two, it's a lighter purple. Oh, how Katy Perry of him. Number 36, in the Invader Zim episode, Plague of Babies, the character Schnooky, not to be confused with Snooky, was originally going to be Tommy Pickles, voiced by his official actress, E.G. Daly. However, copyright issues led to Nickelodeon rejecting the use of the Rugrat and the idea was scrapped. Number 37. We all know that Tommy's blue shirt is a part of his signature look, but he's actually switched it up a couple of times. Tommy wears an orange shirt three times in the series and a red shirt twice. Ooh, talk about variety. Number 38. Nick Magazine revealed that Phil and Lil were born on March 31st. Number 39. In the original series, the twins are 15 months old. Number 40. Only four characters appear in the series finale of both Rugrats and All Growing Up. They are Tommy, Dill, Stu, and Dee Dee. Number 41. Rugrats is the only of the three original Nicktoons not to move on to another network. Number 42. Klasky often felt that the babies were acting too old for their age. She also felt that Angelica was a little too mean. This led to tension between her and the writers. Chupo would mediate, but the writers usually won. Number 43. Klasky's conflict with the writers actually led to the creation of Dr. Lipschitz, who was a vehicle for them to mock the co-creator's actions. Number 44. Steven Spielberg has cited Rugrats as one of the best animated programs of all time. He's called it a sort of TV peanuts of our time. Though, to be fair, Tommy does kind of look like E.T., so he might have been a little biased. Number 45. Rugrats has garnered four Daytime Emmy Awards. Hey everyone, my name is Tim and I'm taking over for Maggie for just a quick second to let you know that Channel Federator is going to be starting a new show pilot soon. The show is called Mismatched and we're going to be pairing people with shows they probably would have never watched unless we made them. So stay tuned for watching soccer moms watching cartoons that soccer moms would never ever 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 watch. I would rather watch Oprah or something more positive or go outside and look at a tree. Seriously dudes. This was intense, okay? It should be fun to see, and I hope you'll check it out when it comes out. And now, back to Maggie with the facts. Number 46. Part of the reason that the baby's favorite dinosaur, Reptar, was introduced was to serve as a social commentary on the increasing influence of Japanese pop culture and children's entertainment. Though I'm still waiting for a crossover with Dragon Ball Z. Reptar, Reptar, gotta find that Reptar. Number 47. Though the babies never age in the original series, they celebrate three Christmases, one Hanukkah, one Kwanzaa, two Halloweens, one Thanksgiving, and one Valentine's Day. It's like their very own Groundhog Day, minus the Groundhog Day. Number 48. Diane Kwan, the voice actress of Kimmy Finster, is legally blind. Her scripts were actually written in braille. Number 49. The recurring character Taffy, the babysitter, was voiced by none other than Amanda Bynes. Amanda, please. Number 50. Angelica Pickles was number 7 in TV Guide's 50 Greatest Cartoon Characters. She beat out classic characters like Bart Simpson and even Mickey Mouse. Number 51. All Grown Up is the only Rugrats spin-off to make it to air, but there were two others in the works. One would follow the family of Susie Carmichael as they moved to Atlanta, and the other, titled Preschool Days, would have focused on the preschool days of Angelica and Susie. The first was never picked up, and the second, Preschool Days, only had four episodes produced in a noticeably different style than that of the original series. These episodes were shelved before eventually being released on DVD. Number 52. Gabor Chupo and Arlene Klasky created Rugrats in 1989. At the time, they were animators for The Simpsons. Number 53. Chupo and Klasky based the show's concept on their own observations of their children. They submitted it to Nickelodeon, who had just announced their line of animated shows called Nicktoons. Number 54. The original on-aired pilot for Rugrats only featured the babies Tommy, Phil, and Lil. Chucky and Angelica were added later for the series debut. Number 55. In 1994, Rugrats was canceled after 65 episodes. Between 1995 and 1996, 
two holiday specials were aired to critical acclaim. The positive feedback prompted Nickelodeon to renew the series and commission its first film. Rugrats made its return to television in 1997, with the film being released shortly after in the following year. Number 56, Rugrats Go Wild, the third Rugrats film, was a crossover between the Wild Thornberries. It was originally planned for a three-part special, but it was shelved and later redeveloped as a feature film. Number 57. From 1997 to 2001, there was a Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade balloon of Tommy and Chucky mounted on Spike. It was Nickelodeon's first balloon and the first balloon in the history of the parade to feature three characters. Number 58. The Rugrats movie was the first non-Disney animated film to gross over 100 million at the box office, making Rugrats the richest babies of all time. Number 59. Dill's full name is Dylan Prescott Pickles. Number 60. At one point, it was planned for his first name to be Dilbert. Ugh, Dilbert. Number 61. In theaters, the Rugrats movie was preceded by the cat dog short Fetch. The DVD and the VHS releases of the film feature the cat dog short Winslow's documentary instead. Number 62. Arlene Klasky said that Rugrats was inspired by a simple question she asked herself, hmm, if babies could talk, what would they say? She also found herself wondering about the logic that drove tiny humans to desperately want to stick their hands in the toilet. And normal size humans. <clears throat> uh, moving on. Number 63. Christine Cavanaugh voiced Chucky Finster for over a decade. She was also the actress behind other well-loved characters such as Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory and Babe the Pig from the film of the same name. She passed away in December 2014 at the age of 51. Number 64. Elizabeth Daly, the voice of Tommy Pickles, once recorded lines of the show while in labor. Oh, uh, whoa. That is commitment to her work. Number 65. In 1998, the Washington Post ran a Rugrats comic strip for the Jewish New Year featuring Grandpa Boris reciting the Mourner's Kaddish. The Anti-Defamation League was not pleased and pushed back against the use of the prayer. They also declared Boris's appearance reminiscent of a Nazi-era depiction of Jews. And Nickelodeon apologized and promised to stop running the strip or any strips featuring Boris. Number 66. Nickelodeon's former president, Herb Scannell, once expressed to the New York Times that, in some ways, this is our Mickey Mouse, this being the Rugrats. Number 67. He also summed up the show's appeal by noting that, it's tough to be a kid in an adult world. Kids don't always get it right, and adults don't always have the answers. In that sense, it's kind of a manifesto of the Nickelodeon philosophy. Number 68. Chucky is ticklish on his foot. He may want to get that checked out. Number 69. Because Kira has legally adopted Chucky as her son, and Chaz has legally adopted Kimmy as his daughter, the two babies are technically not step-siblings. In the eyes of the law, they're just siblings. Number 70. The behind-the-scenes for Rugrats in Paris reveals that Chucky was originally going to sing I Want a Mom for himself, but the legendary Cyndi Lauper ended up beating him out. She comes out on top every time, doesn't she? Number 71. This may be a little TMI, but did you know that Chucky has freckles on his bottom? <laughs> Number 72. There are moments in both the series and the Rugrats in Paris film that imply that Susie and Chucky have crushes on each other. In fact, both have asked each other out to dance. Number 73. Angelica is the only Rugrat to have remained an only child throughout the entire franchise. There is a cat that kind of looks like her, though. Number 74. Prior to the show's first cancellation, Angelica was quite the menace. After its revival, it seemed that she was softened up a bit to cater to younger audiences. And me. She used to give me nightmares, no joke. Ah! Number 75. Angelica hates coconuts and baked apples. Will remind me not to invite her to my Caribbean-themed Thanksgiving. Number 76. In All Grown Up, Angelica is in the seventh grade. So I guess it's not really all grown up. She can't even drive yet. Number 77. The Rugrats love those in-the-mouth camera shots. Phil is the Rugrat to have the most of them, quite a prestigious record. Number 78. On the other end of the spectrum, Will and Susie have only had inner mouth shots once each. Number 79. In All Grown Up, only three characters get the in-mouth shot treatment. That would be Angelica, Dill, and Spike. Number 80. Phil is a mere two seconds younger than Lil, which is like two years in baby time. Number 81. In the Rugrats movie, it's revealed by Tommy that Phil poops an awful lot. Number 82. Though Phil says he only has three teeth, a shot of him biting down on a hose showed that he has about eight, which leads us to believe that Phil is wearing dentures. Number 83. Phil is quite the lady killer. In addition to going out with Wally Raymond, he also had an unnamed girlfriend starting in season five of All Grown Up. Number 84. The episode I Do suggests that Lil may like Chucky. Well, I guess Susie has some competition. Number 85. Lil loves to sing and dance. Oh, and also eat bugs. 
Number 86. Spike doesn't talk much in the series, probably because he's a dog. He has spoken on occasion, though. Once it was even voiced by Bruce Willis. Are you talking to me? I wish my dog talked like Bruce Willis. Number 87. Another actor who voiced Spike was Michael Bell. Bell is better known for playing Drew, Chaz, and dear old Boris. Number 88. When Spike's collar is shown in the series, there are no symbols or words on it. Well, gee, that is a surefire way to get a lost dog back home safe. Number 89. Rugrats Go Wild reveals that Spike thinks of the babies like they're his own. Number 90. Dill is one of the two Rugrats to debut in a Rugrats movie. Number 91. The second is, of course, Kimmy. Number 92. When he's older, Dill has the red hair of his mother, but the unusual interests of his father. Number 93. Dill believes in aliens, but doesn't find them frightening. The shape of his head leads me to believe that he actually could be one. Number 94. Well, actually, there is a reason for that. Dill was accidentally dropped on his head when he was a baby. The culprits? Phil and Lil, of course. Number 95. Kimmy is the only Rugrat to never have an in-mouth camera shot. What are you hiding, Kimmy? Huh? What are you hiding? Number 96. Kimmy only cries in three episodes. What a tough girl. They are Cuddly Bunny, The Big Sneeze, and Cynthia Comes Alive. If the last episode is anything like what it implies, I can see why she would be crying. Once again, Angelica gave me nightmares. Number 97, Kimmy's biological father is Hiro Watanabe. He lives in Japan and has one other daughter who is Kimmy's half-sister. Number 98, Kimmy's half-sister is named Kiki. Hmm, I am sensing a theme here. Number 99, Susie is the only female Rugrats to wear lipstick. Number 100. Susie is voiced by Cree Summer, who you may also recognize as number 5 from Codename Kids Next Door, Princess Kita from Atlantis The Lost Empire, or Valeria Gray from Danny Phantom. There's also a lot more roles where that came from, so look her up! She does live action too, guys. Number 101. There are two episodes where Cree was unable to voice Susie. Instead, E.G. Daly stood in for her. Number 102. Susie has the most siblings out of all the Rugrats. She has two older brothers and an older sister, and probably a lot of hand-me-downs. Number 103. Susie and Kimmy are the only Rugrats who aren't shown as baby babies. Number 104. It's been shown or explained how each of the Rugrats began walking, but there are two exceptions to this. Susie and Kimmy's first steps have yet to be revealed. Hopefully they'll show them in the E! True Hollywood story of Susie and Kimmy, life behind the Rugrats fame. Number 105. The all-grown-up opening song is sung by Susie's voice actress. Number 106. Like her friend Lil, Susie is interested in dancing. In All Grown Up, she takes hip-hop dance lessons. Number 107. Rugrats is the first and only Nicktoon series to receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It was received in 2001 for the show's 10th anniversary. That was 107 facts that you need to know about Rugrats. If you liked the video, make sure that you click some of the links on this page to watch more. Check in the description below for all our references. And make sure you tune in every Tuesday and Thursday for a brand new 107. And remember, Frederator loves you. Some of you guys might think it's kind of messed up to go from train spotting in our last episode to this, but Rugrats recently turned 25, which means all those kids are old enough to be full on alcoholics by now, or even dope feeds. And that's good enough reasoning for us. Here are seven things you didn't know about Rugrats. Probably. I love apple juice. I like apple juice too. Rugrats was one of the original three Nicktoons, which all premiered in August 1991, and it went on to be the most successful Nicktoon out of that first batch. We're talking 172 episodes over 13 years. That is a metric crap ton of drawings. In fact, Rugrats was Nickelodeon's longest running Nicktoon ever until SpongeBob SquarePants took the throne in 2013. He's been living in that pineapple under the sea since 1999, and he's still going strong, with 17 years on the air and over 200 episodes. By the way, that was, boom, a bonus thing you didn't know. A bonus thing that is making me feel like a very old man, so let's move on to the next thing. The baby blue t-shirt and diaper getup was Tommy's signature look throughout Rugrats. Except, you know, when it wasn't. In the unaired pilot, as well as in the premiere episode, he wears a red shirt. Scandalous, I know. But there's more. Tommy used to have pants, you guys. I guess the creators had their reasons to change his outfit. And babies as young as Tommy aren't really able to understand the concept of dignity anyway, so why bother drawing pants on him? That sounds mean. It's kind of the same reason why I never wear pants when I'm narrating the show. Just a diaper. Hey, what'd you do that for? Cause I like ya. <laughs> 
<laughs> Even though Lil is the only girl of the core four Rugrats, Tommy, Chucky, Phil, and Lil were all voiced by women. It's probably not a huge surprise since women often do voice work for younger male characters in movies and TV. What you may not have known is Tommy is also a Powerpuff Girl and a talking pig. Elizabeth E.G. Daly is the actress who voiced Tommy along with Buttercup, Babe, and a crap ton of other characters. Here's the thing though, Tommy low-key stole Chucky's job. See, E.G. Daly only voiced Babe in the sequel, Babe, Pig in the City. Chucky was actually the original voice of Babe, not to mention Marty Sherman on The Critic, Dexter of Dexter's Laboratory, Gosselin on Darkwing Duck, Oblina on Ah! Real Monsters, and dozens of others. Sadly, Christine Cavanaugh, who did Chucky and all of those other voices, passed away in 2014. That's not a bonus thing, that's just an extremely depressing thing. Like, I am seriously bummed out right now. Ugh, let's move on. The Rugrats music is as memorable as the show itself. We can thank Devo for those iconic songs because it was their frontman Mark Mothersbaugh who came up with the theme music. But most people don't know that we can also thank Mark Mothersbaugh for Chucky's character design. The show creators used Mothersbaugh's thick glasses and wild hair as a jumping off point, a model of sorts, for Chucky. Kind of a shame they didn't include the Devo energy dome for Chucky though. That would have been cool. That would have also made me feel really old. God, what is it with this episode? The Simpsons has made a running gag out of making the audience guess where Springfield is, but the Rugrats didn't bother with that. Rugrats takes place in California, and as you can see on this invoice that Dee Dee is signing, the Pickles live at 1258 North Highland. That particular address actually makes pretty good sense, because that's the same address of the Class B Chupo production offices in Los Angeles. That's the company behind the Rugrats and other Nicktoons, including the Wild Thornberries and Rocket Power. And now that we know where they are, we're totally going over there to demand new episodes of Real Monsters right after these last two things. Excellent. Simply excellent. <laughs> I bet you didn't know that the Rugrats were the first animated property to really be able to tell Disney to suck it. <gasps> because the Rugrats movie was the first animated movie in history to gross over $100 million that wasn't made by Disney. It was also the first time Nickelodeon had an animated feature film in theaters, period, so it was a really big deal. That was back in 1998. The sequel, Rugrats in Paris, didn't do as well two years later, but it still made over $75 million. Unfortunately, the Rugrats Wild Thornberries crossover that they did in 2003 did poorly, and once the show aired its final episode the following year, it was finally a wrap for the Rugrats. You know, if you don't count all grown up. And I do not. Even after Rugrats ended, it went on to have a big afterlife with its fans, including a bizarre conspiracy theory about all the other Rugrats being a figment of Angelica's imagination. Seriously, look it up. Actually, don't look it up, because it's stupid. Anyway, we're betting a lot of you guys didn't know that Reptar bars are real. Wow! Reptar? A candy bar? That's right, you little babies. At least they were real, for a moment, back in 2013. Ashley Causey of Smash Bakes in Chino, California made real Reptar bars with the wrappers and everything. And Jackie Lee, another blogger, shared a Reptar bars recipe on her blog, The Weeping Timeline, promising green tongues for all. Unfortunately, it looks like if you wanted one of these things today, you'd be stuck making it yourself. I'm sure there'd be some kind of lawsuit over copyright if anyone tried to sell Reptar bars, unless you want to sell one only to me and no one else, because that would be totally cool and legal. Just send the candy and an invoice to pervy, pantsless narrator, Kara of Cinefix, Hollywood Town, USA. Thanks in advance. Well, we hope you guys learned some new things today. We're all feeling super nostalgic after this one, so we may need you to talk us down from doing more Nicktoons on the show. Rewatching Ren and Stimpy in the name of research sounds like a great day at the office. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more truish things about movies and sometimes cartoons about talking babies from the 90s right here on Things You Didn't Know. <laughs>